Hello, this is Cecil again. I have a pretty cool replay of PvZ where there's this very interesting, I'd call it like a timing attack that you can do, and it's actually more of like a mid to late game timing attack where you have Immortals, Stalker, Sentry, and Templar, and you hit just as Hive Tech finishes before they can actually take advantage of the Hive Tech. And what that does is it makes it so that your composition can defeat basically any composition that the Zerg can have whatsoever. You have Immortals for the um, uh, Armored Roaches, you have Templar for Hydra or Muta or Lings, and then you have Stalkers for mobility, and you also have Sentry for support of the composition overall. So I'm going to go ahead and just analyze the replay, go over it with you guys. Starting off with my own, I don't even know what you would call it. I've been doing it for for months now. It's like a gateway expand, like a gateway nexus fast expand. And I like to do it against everything except hatch first. Or some sort of delayed pool. If a pool goes down at two minutes, I'm almost always going to get a gateway. Um, even with earlier pools as well. I just like having zealots. If it's later than two minutes, I'll usually go for a nexus first build. Okay, so here you can see he's got six early lings. Gateway is actually great for this as long as you have two pylons. Uh, when I first started doing this build, or this opening, it's not a build. I would only have one pylon, I put the other pylon at my nexus. One pylon gets sniped easily. If you have two against early lings like so, you can uh, be sure that he won't be able to unpower your gateway. So he's attacking the gateway, probably the worst thing he could do. Uh, six links, go ahead and pull some probes. You can see that I have this many probes mining and he has this many drones mining. So I'm losing about three workers of uh, mining time for a moment. I lost one or two probes and I continue back on mining and now suddenly I'm ahead by five workers. And I'm counterattacking with two zealots which puts me in an excellent position, 400 minerals for another nexus. So this gateway opening is really good against early pools. As long as you have good probe micro. Like, I can't be losing a bunch of income to these zealots here. Uh, since I know I'm so far ahead because of his poor choice to just attack my gateway, I'm going to skip my forge just to get a separate core. And I'm just kind of posturing over here to try to coax out some more wings instead of drones, which was successful, and it keeps my lead and worker count, or it solidifies my lead and worker count. Here I get the forge, so that I can tech. If I didn't get the forge, I'd have to continue zealot production, which I don't really want to do. I want to tech, tech, tech. I was ahead by like 15 workers a moment ago. Okay, now we're getting to the cool part where I fast expand. On maps with uh, an easily defendable third, this third is not very defendable. However, this third is very defendable. You can put gateways here and then like infinitely force field your ramp. Take your third safely from unlimited amounts of roaches, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. Not the fastest of thirds, but it's relatively quick. Checking pretty hard back here. I'm going for blink, plus two attack. Uh, plus two weapons makes blink stalkers kill roaches really quickly. Build your gateway count as you take your third. Just all that general good stuff. Almost to the very interesting part of the replay. Of course, having good observer usage, very important. If you're going to be doing a fast third build, you need to know what your opponent is doing and where their army is. And I ran out of force fields for a moment. He came up the ramp. That's okay. I'm going to trap all this stuff and kill it. Uh, not all of it, but most of it. And now we're finally getting to the interesting part where I get the Templar tech out. Now, I was trying to catch my opponent off guard. Or not off guard. Kind of get his roaches trapped by sort of poking around these sides, trying to lure his roaches in. And didn't have an observer in a proper spot. Here it is right here not in a proper location, and you can see 
just the small mistake of not having an observer makes me put down force fields here so I can't be flanked. I just can't see what's going on over here and then you'll see in a moment and festers come down and just sort of shred this army apart. Whereas if I wait a little longer for my Templar tech to kick in as I start mining more gas from this third, I'd be in a great shape to face infestors. I'm just not ready for it right now. I do my best to blink forward and pick off some of the infestors. I think I only got one. Very poor engage for me. I'm down by like 1500 resources now. And I'm forced to go back up my ramp. And rebuild the army. And because of this mistake, I'm not able to do the really strong Templar push like I was talking about. He's able to get Hive Tech faster than I can punish him for it. Or not punish him for it, faster than I can execute my my timing. And you'll end up... Uh, you'll see what happens momentarily because of that. Templar is really good for feedback and storm. Storming roaches is really good. So long as you have immortals, because the damage dealt to the roaches during the fight will make immortals kill them in like one, maybe two less shots, and the mortals start falling very, very hard. He's talking about denying expansions because I keep expanding up in this defended location. Like a smart person. He baited out a storm. I was like, oh my god, leagues. Clearing out the towers before you move. Uh, always a smart thing to do, keep the opponent in the dark. No reason to just waddle up here in the middle and let him see everything. Okay, so now here's his hive. He's uh, got the greater spire. He's making um, corruptors already. So my push is a little late. You actually want to be pushing as, ideally as the hive is morphing. So that you can actually kill the player just before his hive tech has a chance to kick in. So here's the feedback. If I did not have feedback, my army would get taken apart. Like, if these Templar weren't here, this battle would go just about as bad as, probably worse than the one that was over here. The Templar really was enabling me to be so aggressive right now. More feedbacks. Blinking a small pack forward to get rid of the fungals. Target down the ones with the most energy. He was only able to get down two fungals as opposed to, like, seven that he had. Now you can see the blanket storms lower the HP on so many of these roaches. The immortals are just going to be able to tear through all of this. No problem. Morph those Templar back into Archons. And now here's the push that I'm trying to execute. The really, really strong immortal soccer Templar push. What I did here is I postured towards this extra base to kind of coax his army out into an engagement that is very favorable for myself. Trapped a very big ball of roaches. Right after this I'm going to run up and kill his hive and his broodlord tech. It's actually very smart of him to put his hive and broodlord tech here. That way uh, he won't lose it all to a warp prism. Also, when I come up as natural, I take a lot of time to kill these two buildings, to whereas if his hive was in his main, I come up as natural, I would have found these broodlords morphing and I would have killed every single one. So a very good move of him putting them in here. He actually sacks his hive and his greater spire. Buys him just enough time for the broodlords to come out. And I immediately retreat. So the timing attack was successful, I took out <laughs> all of his high tier tech. If I got this infestation pit, he would be back to the hatchery days. Sadly I did not even notice it was there. So now we're in the late game, the Zerg has successfully gotten his Broodlord tech out. What the heck do I do in the late game? You might be thinking, mothership, mothership! Well no, you don't actually have to have a mothership. And I'll show you why in a little bit. This isn't actually the best replay to exemplify some late game, uh, late game army clashing for Protoss vs. Zerg, but it's still pretty good because he has a good number of rulers inf and infestors, just not an ideal amount of infestors during the engagement because of the timing attack that dealt so much damage. 
So what you do is same composition, but instead of having so many stalkers, or so many of anything really, you want stargate units. Void rays are okay. I like carriers because they are falling. Um, try to get the air attack if you can. Yeah, I've got plus one air attack. Uh, I have fleet beacon, so I should be researching the next one. So I'm going to fast forward to the engagement just so you can see how strong this is. Carriers are able to siege broodlords, infestors, they kill corruptors pretty quickly as long as you have upgraded attack. Immortals take care of any armor on the ground, ultra switches, roach switches. Templars provide splash against Ling, Baneling, Hydralisk, feedback on infestors, and they can morph into Archons, which are extremely useful later against a lot of corruptors. Because the Zerg is very likely to remax on <laughs> like a ton of corruptors. Try to kill all your uh, Stargate units, and then go move them, morph them into Broodlords. But you'll see, as long as you have uh, Templar and Archon, the Storm and the Archons take care of corruptors very easily. Blanket Storms on the wings. He had a lot of wings because he couldn't. Uh, I'm actually not sure why. This probably should have been made wings, but whatever. So now all of my carriers are alive. He has nothing to kill them. Uh, these bird lords are going to die really quickly. I was just queuing uh, my stalkers, but I should have just queued the carriers instead so that I didn't lose all those stalkers. Hallucination in the late game, why not? Now you can see I have this absolutely unbeatable army marching my marching its way across the map. Remax on Corruptors. One Archon comes over and starts hitting the Corruptors. Archon steal a ton of damage from Corruptors. Like, look at a whale. 21 kill, 24 kill. And then I warp in a bunch of Templar here in a moment. Yeah, Templar. I still have half my carriers. And now here's where the Archons really shine against a bunch of Corruptors. Okay, how many is there? There's 12 here? That's a lot of Corruptors. That would take out my Stargate tech very easily. Pretty much have the game won anyways, but... This last battle will just show you how good the splash is if you can engage well protect your carriers from the uh, enemy corruptors. It's up to 15 now. What it did was I moved my main army over to this base again to lure his army down the ramp so I could have a better engage. Had to sack some stalkers to do so. That's okay, stalkers are my least uh, uh, cost efficient units, or er, population efficient units right now. So here I grab all my archons and just right clicking on the corruptors. And I think I actually storm them as well. We'll see. See how fast these things fall. Yes, he did kill, kill um, a couple carriers, but he lost an insane amount of resources and corruptors to do so. <laughs> well, Protoss. So there you have it. Uh, a very strong three base, immortal, blink stalker, templar push. And you could follow it up with very strong late game, which includes Archons, Templar, Stargate Tech. Uh, mothership carrier, those things are wonderful. If you have mothership carrier, couple colossus, some archons, and templar and immortals, I don't know. There's just nothing that can kill that. It's the best composition, but it's also the hardest to get. Templar is one tech path, robo is one tech path, uh, stargate's another tech path. That's every tech path. So if you can get that, you basically deserve to win. So that should be your end goal. All right, cool. Well, there's nothing else to talk about in the replay. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Ask any questions you have in the comments, and I will definitely answer them.